Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Firebase Semi-Live. So we've been making pretty good progress with our cloud function that has been listening to our notification or our billing notification pub sub. Um, we have recorded the last amount that we spent in Cloud Firestore, and now we are only pinging our Slack channel um, if we notice that there's actually been a change since the last time we recorded that information. So now you're not going to get pinged all the time, only you know when your costs go up by, you know, in our case, one penny, maybe you're going to have that set to something like a dollar or more. But there's still a few things that we could do to make this better. So uh, let's get cracking. Actually, the first thing I noticed is I went and deployed this function a little while ago, and it doesn't actually seem to be working um, in production. And I'm realizing after looking at this, since it's not really reporting any errors, I think the biggest problem is while I do have my billing info document that exists here in my emulator suite, over here in my actual production app, there is no private billing info document. And that is probably throwing off my function because it's sort of waiting to see if that exists. So this is actually a pretty easy fix, I think. What we can basically do is if our uh, billing info document does not exist, let's, uh, you know, we're just going to set send message to true. And our message string can simply say something like, Billing function is up and running. You have spent, and we'll show spent so far, because that's still something that we're calculating. And we'll just say that we've spent that. And I think that's all we need to do. So uh, probably easy enough to test. I'm going to go ahead into my emulator suite, and I'm going to delete this document. Here, we'll delete the document. There we go. I suppose I could just clear out all data. Let's do that. All right, there we go. So starting super fresh. Uh, now let's go ahead and call our function again. So it's gone ahead and said, billing function is up and running. You have spent 24 cents so far. And I think I probably need to do a little refresh, but there it is. It has also gone and created my billing info document. So now it is properly set up and you know, once again, ready to kind of handle, the, handle these zero states. So that's pretty good. I think maybe the next thing I want to tackle is what if it is a new billing cycle, right? Like clearly this will work until we get to the end of the month. And then, you know, at some point we'll kind of need to recognize, oh, okay, it's a new month and our costs are going to be, you know, back below 24 cents. And, you know, we're going to kind of need to make a record of that. So how are we going to detect it's a new billing cycle? One potentially hacky way of doing it is just looking and seeing if our costs are actually less than our last reported cost, that probably means we're in a new billing cycle, right? Like there's no other way you can go from spending 38 cents to spending zero unless we're starting a new billing cycle. But that just feels a little odd to me that we're sort of relying on, on this cost amount when in fact, you'll remember that the pub sub notification is actually sending us the cost interval start value that you'll remember is the beginning of the current billing cycle. We really should take advantage of that. Also, I bet you can think of some weird edge cases where that logic might not actually work. I think using the dates feel a little better, even though, honestly, I always hate having to deal with dates because they're never quite formatted the way you need them to be. So let's see here. So we'll say, okay, yeah, if you spent this in a message, uh, we could probably make it an else here, right? So otherwise, if, and we'll say like, is new billing cycle, and we'll probably need to pass in both our pub sub data as well as our previous billing info. Well, then, you know, probably send message equals true, and our message string will probably say something like, it is now a new billing cycle you have spent. And we'll put in our spent so far amount. Great. All I need to do now is actually define this function. All right, so we're going to create our function here just to remind myself what it is we're writing. Function is new billing cycle, and we'll pass in our pub sub data, which I believe is type any, lowercase, and previous billing info, which is like a type firebase firestore dot document data. And so let's see here. For now, let's just print out what things look like. And we'll, uh, like, I don't know, we'll turn false. 
because I'm never quite sure what date formats look like when we get them from various places. So uh, let's see here. So we've got our PubSub data, which is and has cost interval start as the field. And then our last recorded date is, and we're gonna have to actually remember to add this to our document. So let's see, we'll just call this our previous billing info dot last reported. So we have last reported cost, last reporting billing start. Let's try that. So first thing I'm gonna do is go into my emulator suite here and I'm gonna add that field. Let's make sure I copy the name down correctly. And this will be a timestamp and it will be equal to, let's set it to uh, beginning of the month. And it's complaining because I'm saying this is document data and billing info could be undefined. But again, I don't think it is because we checked that it exists. So I'm just going to force unwrap that. Okay, yay. So let's try this now. So our cost interval start is this string. Our last recorded date is an object object. Interesting. Let's see if we can get more info on that. get a little inspect. All right, okay, so it's a timestamp with a seconds value and a nanoseconds value. All right, well, I think we can probably work with these. So let's see here, we will say that our Billing cycle start, or let's say start of current cycle seems to be, and I think if we basically create a new date from pub sub data cost interval start, which is a string, that will properly convert this into a date. And we can say, last billing cycle start date. I think since we're getting this as a timestamp, we should just be able to call to date on it. And then let's see if start of billing cycle, start of current cycle, So I'm actually not sure. I don't quite remember if date equality will work this way. Will it just be like, well, these two seem to be the same dates. Therefore, I'll say they're the same. I might need to convert these into like, I might need to call like, you know, get time on them, which will then sort of get the time value in milliseconds. I don't quite remember if, I suppose I could look it up. Hang on. Date one equals date two. False. Right, it's because it's checking to see are these the same object in memory, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, I imagine if I call get time, is that equal to date two get time? Yeah, okay, that's true. I'm gonna do the same here. Rather than check this and make sure, see if, all right, get time, get time. And well, might as well return a value then. So is new billing cycle, if the dates are the same, then it is not a new billing cycle. If the dates are different, then it is a new billing cycle. So I think this should be enough to work.
Got no compilation errors. Let me go ahead and try this. And it is telling us the dates are different and we probably even got an alert that it's a new billing cycle. Hey, how about that? Because basically we went into this clause here where you know we said, okay, it's a new billing cycle. You've now spent this. And I think the problem is if I do this again, oh, no, okay, I'm running into a problem. It can't read the property to date of undefined. Well, okay, that's, I'm actually surprised it worked in the first place. But basically the issue that, oh no, I see what's happening. Okay, the reason it worked before was I had properly stored my date here in uh, my document in the emulator. And you know, did a comparison, said they're different, must be the beginning of a new milling cycle. And then when it sends a message, the th other thing it does is it goes ahead and it sets this document. And then I ran it again and I still haven't actually recorded the current billing cycle start date in this billing info document. So let's do that and that will make all of our code look better. So I believe our field is last reported billing start. So what we can do is, so there's our last reported cost. Our last reported billing start is going to be our data. Actually, it will be a new date from our, well, basically this, our pub sub data cost interval start. All righty. Yeah, no trailing semicolon there. All right, let's try this one more time. So, well here, I'm doing one where, actually, let's go ahead and properly, we'll actually just clear out all our data. Yay. All right, so we'll go ahead and start this. We get a little alert that it is, all right, it's new billing cycle or sorry, billing function is up and running. So our script is started up again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna change the date. So it is now February 1st. And it is saying it's a new billing cycle. I'm gonna go ahead and keep things in this billing cycle and I'll just you know change my cost to like 26 cents. We should now get an alert that we're spending 26 cents. I'm gonna do it again. Don't get an alert that other time. And then, you know, we're gonna say, hey, you know what? It's now March. And because it's March, our spending has gone back down to one penny, but we'll still get an alert that it's now a new billing cycle. And this entire time, I'd probably need to reload this. There you go. In our emulator suite is recording our last recorded billing start time. And it's recording it as February 28th instead of March 1st because of time zone things. So this is pretty good. Uh, let's do a little bit of refactoring. Well, first, I don't like the fact that I'm calling this data instead of pub sub data. So let's rename this to pub sub data. The other thing I'm not a huge fan of is the fact that it is of type any, which means I'm kind of making sure that I'm calling cost amount properly here and not relying on any typos. So here's a little thing I can do. I'll uh, create a little interface. You know what? Should we get rid of hello world? Goodbye, hello world. I guess we don't really need you. We'll create a little interface that's called pub sub data. And in there, I'm gonna say it has a cost amount. That's a number. And it has a cost interval start, which is a string. So I think what I can now do is I'm going to say this handle pub sub function is going to take in an object of type pub sub data, and this is going to be message JSON as pub sub data. And I think I'd probably have to do the same thing down here. There you go. So this is just sort of slightly better, I guess, type safety. Like right now, if I were to type, you know, pub sub data dot 
VS Code is you now properly saying, oh, well, if this is a pub sub data interface, then you probably either want cost amount or cost interval start. So hopefully, you know, no more typos. Or if there are typos, it's a typo here and I can only have to fix it once. Similarly, actually, now let's just go ahead and say this pub sub data is of type pub sub data. So this is a little better. Like I think TypeScript is a little strange in that I'm, you know, attempting to cast this as pub sub data, but like if I had a JSON element that didn't have these fields in it, it would still go ahead and do it and be like, sure, whatever. I don't think there's a way I can without sort of creating essentially a new class, which might be a thing I could do if I were serious about this is create a new class and then, you know, have it double check for these fields that exist in the JSON. This is just sort of a nice way of kind of saying, you know what, I'm pretty sure these JSON fields are going to contain this information. I actually wonder if I could do that with my uh, previous billing info document data as well. I probably could. So we're making pretty good progress here. There's a couple other functions I want to add. I want to add one to see if maybe the um, projected spend is going to look like it's going to be really high by the end of the month. That's something we can start to do. And I'm also going to create a function that kind of crudely, you know, checks to see how much you've spent, you know, over the last whatever time period. And if, you know, your pennies per second looks to be too high, maybe also send you a warning. Since I feel like we're at a pretty good stopping point, maybe a little earlier than usual, I will save both those functions for the next video. So I'll see you then. Thanks everybody.